In this video, we're going to look at types of data, different ways of grouping data, i.e. in frequencies and group frequencies, and also we're going to look at histograms. So first of all, we're going to look at types of data. The two main types of data are discrete data. So discrete data can only take exact uh, values. So for example, shoe sizes, your shoe size could be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever it happens to be. Continuous data, however, is data which is given as given within a range or degree of accuracy. So for in this example, height, which is 144 centimeters to the nearest centimeter. So that has been rounded. So I always think of it um, for continuous data, anything like height, length, speed, time. And if you imagine you, you could say, well, I've measured it really accurately. I've measured it to be 144.12199991211, whatever it happens to be. Somebody could come along. So you've maybe gone to 10 or 12 decimal places. Somebody else could come along and go to even more. So no matter how accurate you think you've made it, somebody else could come along and make it more accurate. Okay, raw data is data which is uh, is just the original stuff. So the original thing that you have surveyed, and we'll be seeing very soon that um, once we put it into the table, quite often the original information is lost. And the next thing is qualitative data, which is data not consisting of numbers. So it is data which is mathematically a lot more difficult to work with. Um, so it's got things like eye color or anything you really have to describe and you can't describe numerically. So quantitative data is data consisting of numbers, so height, height, speed, time, age, any of these things would be uh, quantitative. Okay, going to look at frequency distributions, and this is a discrete frequency distribution. So frequency distribution is just really a way of displaying this thing. So let's just go through and see if we can understand what's going on here. So uh, there, there are, this is a, somebody has surveyed people and their, uh, how many cousins they have. So this zero and this two means there are two times when uh, people surveyed have got no cousins. The six and the one means there are six times when people have got one cousin. We'll skip on here. There are nine times when people have got five cousins, and there are two times when people have got six cousins. And then you could then, we'll see later on, you can find the mean standard deviations and all these things uh, from this frequency distribution. Right, the next thing, so that was for discrete distribution. We're now going to look at different ways these are three different ways of doing the same thing and you need to understand these that these are all do represent the same thing in my opinion this first one is the easiest and it's easiest because you can clearly see what the boundaries are so this first uh, boundary this first uh, interval i should say is from 119.5 is less than or equal to the height which is less than 124.5 so you can clearly see the lower class boundary of this thing is 119.5 and the upper class boundary is 124.5. That's very important because of this. Class width, which we'll see in a wee minute when we're looking at our histograms. Class width, you find it by doing the upper class boundary minus the lower class boundary. So let's just look at the same thing over here. So this first interval over here is 120 to 124 to the nearest centimeter. But if you think about what the actual boundaries are, the boundaries are not 120 and they're not 124. Because uh, the lowest thing that you could be to fall into this class would be 100 and 119, oh, sorry, 119.5. Because you can imagine if you, the, the height of something was 119.5, that would get rounded up to 120. Likewise here, Really, the highest it could be is 120, uh, 124.4999, 9, 9, 9, 9, forever and ever and ever. So really, uh, that would be the, the largest thing that could go into that thing. But that is so close to it that we really may as well just write that as 124.5. So it's not mathematically wrong to say that the boundaries are 119.5 and 124.5 because of the inequality, because it's a less than 124.5. So notice the next boundary for this one, the lower boundary would be 124.5. Uh, so if you're 124.5, uh, if you're 124.5, the upper boundary of this one's 124.5, but you can't actually be 124.5. So if you're 124.5, you'd go into the second interval. And that would be it. And the last one, a fairly easy way of saying it again, pretty much like the first one. 
uh, you can see the boundaries are 129.5, sorry, 119.5, 124.5. And again, the upper class boundary of the of the previous one is the same as a lower class boundary of the next, and that's important. So again, here, upper class boundary of your second interval is 129.5, and the lower class boundary of your third interval is 129.5. So the key thing here is this, that class width then is the upper class boundary minus the lower class boundary. So in particular, if you had it in this form, you'd need to know what the upper class boundaries and the lower class boundaries really are. Okay, in this example, we're just going to look at again uh, frequency distribution, and this is a continuous one. So here, the first uh, interval is from 100 and 130 to 134, and really the lower class boundary of this is 129.5, and the upper class boundary is 134.5. But notice you're allowed to be 100 and 29.5, you would still go into that first interval, but if you were actually were 134.5, you wouldn't go into that interval, you'd go into the second interval. So the width of that uh, interval is 134.5 minus 129.5, so the width is 5. Right, now we've got one person in this interval, that's all we have, and we do not know an awful lot about their height or whatever it happens to be that we're measuring here. Uh, because we only know that they, their height or whatever it is lies within a certain range, so it lies between uh, lies between 130 and 134, or 129.5 and 134.5. So we have to make an assumption, and we have to assume that they take the value of the midpoint. So when you add 129.5 and 134.5, and then divide by two you will get 132. So we have to assume everyone in that first interval, their height really is 132. We have no idea. It's highly unlikely it actually is that, but that's just the way it is. That's as best as we can do. So uh, when you go through all of these things, uh, you can see what the midpoints would be, and you would have to, you would need to work at the midpoints of each one of these classes uh, to see if you were going to perform any calculations. This example is a very special case, and it's one that examiners are very fond of. We're going to think about here the age, and I'm just going to pick, it's really written all down below this, but I'll go through this again. Uh, it says here, the age of somebody here is from 5 to 9. Now, you are 5 the second that you turn 5, but you, and you're, you stay 9 until the second that you turn 10. So the upper boundary of being 9 years old is really 10. So if you're... Uh, you are nine years old until the very millisecond that you turn 10. So uh, really the boundary of being nine is 10. Likewise, if we just look at, at this one. Uh, really, that's going to be 20 is the lower boundary. And then that's less than or equal to your age. And the upper boundary strictly is going to be 25. Okay, uh, very important. And we'll see that in our next example or in our histograms example, how we're going to use that. So again, just run through that again very quickly. You're five in the first one. Uh, the lower boundary being five is five. And the upper boundary of being nine is strictly 10 because you're nine all the way up to the very millisecond that you turn 10 years old. Okay, we're gonna look at histograms. Histograms are very similar to bar charts in a way, but they have a couple of very important differences. So in a bar chart, a uh, traditional bar chart, your height would represent the frequency of that particular class. But in a histogram, the area of the bar represents the frequency of that particular class. So a very important formula for us here is our frequency density. And our frequency density is going to be, sorry, frequency density is just going to be equal to frequency divided by width. And this formula can be used to draw a histogram to obtain frequencies from a histogram. So whatever way around. So what I mean by that is you could rearrange that and say frequency is equal to your frequency density times the width. And I think we'll see that in our next example after this one. Okay, the mode. Mode, remember, is the most common value. So the mode, when you've got a histogram drawn for you, it's very, very easy to see. The mode is the class which has the tallest bar. Okay, so it's not the biggest frequency. Uh, so you don't just look at the frequencies, you have to look at the bar and you can then visually see which one is. 
uh, the tallest was dead that easy. Okay, if we look at this example, it says draw a histogram and give the modal group for the class below. First thing we need to do is find the widths. So I'm going to have the widths and then I'm going to have the frequency density, we're going to say here. So the width of this first class, this class is 5 to 9. But look at what it is. It is age. So you're 9 until the very second you turn 10. So the boundaries really are 5 and 10. So the width is 10 minus 5, which is just going to be 5. Next one, the lower boundary is 20, upper boundary is 24. Uh, but it's age, remember, so really the upper boundary is 25. So 25 minus 10 is just going to give you 15. The next one is 25, and the upper boundary really, because it's age, would be 30. 30 minus 25 would be 5. And then the upper boundary, lower boundary is 30, the upper boundary is 54, but really it would be 55 because it's age. 55 minus 30 is going to give you 25. Okay, uh, just to show you how we get this, it's uh, this frequency divided by width, so it's just going to be 1. So 5 divided by 5 equals 1. I'll just pick a different one. I'll just do these ones here. That's going to be two decimal places. going to be 0.47. That's going to be, whoop, sorry. That's going to be 2.2. .2. And the last one, how we do this one, just to show you again how we do this one, it's going to be your frequency divided by the width. So that's how we've got that. And it was 0.52. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and draw this for you now and then talk through uh, exactly what we're going to do. Okay, you can see here I've drawn the, the histogram. Notice key thing here is it used to be that you were it was fine just to write uh, FD, but in recent Mark schemes, GCSE in particular, so probably going on to new A level, they have said you have to say frequency density, so just make sure you do that, don't throw away an easy mark. Another thing to notice is there are no gaps between the bars, so I haven't they are not spaced out, so where my 10, for example, was a lower class boundary of one. One of the things was upper class boundary of the next. There's no gaps. And I also need to write down age as my label on the thing. So you've got your axes labeled, frequency density, and then the appropriate scale, and then age, and it's labeled, and no gaps between the bars. And notice the question also said, what was the modal, uh, the modal interval? So the modal group, I should say. So the modal group. was this one because it was the tallest uh, and just give it in uh, the middle group is uh, so that was our third one along so that was 25 to 29 years old and that's it okay in this example we're going to see how we can find frequencies from a histogram so when you're actually given the histogram how you can work back and find the frequencies so in this example, it says a passenger, Passengers Association conducted a survey on the punctuality of trains using a particular station. The histogram illustrates the results. Construct the frequency distribution. So we need to then get from the original histogram back to the frequency distribution. So just remember, the frequency is the width of the interval times the frequency density, or else just the area of the bar. And the total frequency then is just the total area of all the bars. Okay, we'll look down at the histogram here. So in this histogram, you can see the first one, it has got a frequency density of 6.4 and the width is 5. So the first frequency is 5 times 6.4, so 35. The second one is 5 times 8.8, uh, .8, so 44. The next, the third one is 10 times 2.8, so 28. The next one is 10 times 1.2, so 12, frequency of 12. Next one is 20 times 0.6, which is frequency of 12. And the last bar, this wee narrow bar, thin, narrow, long, narrow bar here, is going to be 30 by 0.2, which is 6. So you have got the number of trains for each thing. Uh, you've got 34, 32, 44, 28, 12, 12, and 6. So there is your frequency, uh, frequency distribution. So the total number of trains, all we do is add those up. So 30. 32 plus 44 plus 28 plus 12 plus 12 plus 6, and it gives you 134. Okay, folks, you're now ready to do the following questions. Uh, it, first one was page 4, exercise 1D, and these are all on your frequency distributions, um, ways of grouping data, types of data, all that sort of stuff. 
and then you've got a histograms exercise which is on page eight it's exercise 3d and questions one to five and then you can do question six as an extra don't do question seven yet because it's on you need to know about standard deviations which we haven't covered just yet